Okay, my good friends, it's Roger once again with another mystery unfolding before our very eyes. Rebecca Ball, who is a self-proclaimed uh, proud vegan, sent me this to investigate this. And lo and behold, it's meat. <laughs> now, this is meat. Now, how can I say that? Well, we're going to investigate it in a minute, but first of all, I want to tell you, this is from Edward Bertnisky, Uracal Potash Mine. Remember that, Potash. We're going to talk about that in a minute. From uh, 2017, apparently, courtesy Robert Koch Gallery. Now, this is uh, the picture of this mine, believe it or not, spectacular. And uh, it's a potash mine. Now, let's talk about potash, and then I will tell you what biological entity, part of the body, and the reason that it has formed in this particular manner. I can explain this. So you've seen the, um, the tunnel here. Now, you look at these little wavy lines in here, and you say, what the heck is that? Well, I'll show you what it is. I have one in my shop right here, which it has the same wavy little lines in it. They're called elastins. And what they do is they, they create tension and stress and pull back and forth. Now, obviously, those aren't as quite as pronounced as those down there, but that just happens to be that they're not as, as relaxed. All right, now this is that rock that I just showed you with the elastins in it, those little black wavy looking elastin fibers. Now they're down on this meat surface down here and they're hard to see, but you know, in the microscope you can see them. Now, I mean, it's obviously meat and this is obviously fascia and that right there is what is called the uh, fascia tongue. Let's see. It's the flap that, it, that holds this whole chunk of meat into the system of your body. And they're really starting to investigate fashion now. Now, when I first took this out of the ground, this was literally like a red piece of meat. They turn darker colored as they sit around. And like even that lung right there. That lung, same thing. When I came out of the ground, it literally gushed blood. I mean, blood ran out of it. I can show you. All right, this is the lung that you can see the, the little lobe structures in it. And the black and the, the red is where the two meet and, and the red blood is there. Now, that particular lung, and this is another lung here. This was DNA tested and, and certified human. And uh, it's about the same size as a human lung. Now, this was the blood that ran out of that lung. I mean, literally ran out. So, don't tell me you can't get blood out of a stone, because these are stones, and they are loaded with blood. And I, I this is the blood that came out of there, and I took that blood, and I did smears of it, and I looked at it in a microscope, and it's, it's red blood cells. Alright, we've seen salt a minute ago, and I say that it was a tendon, and it turned to salt. And we're seeing rib-looking meat turn to salt pink salt mine, pork ribs. I'm telling you, this is biological. Now, how did it turn to salt? Well, I can tell you how it turned to salt. The reason it turned to salt is there's something called natron, natrium, soda, ash, pot ash. All right, that is all natron, they used to call it, and, and that was their embalming fluid, and that's what turned flesh into salts this is underneath the salt great salt lake i mean no, no, i'm sorry this is underneath um the um great lakes and they mine salt under there and you see these these lines here that's not from some volcanic activity or sediments that is the layers of flesh and this is salt and that salt happens because it's in near a kidney and the kidneys in of, of a giant creature and the kidney has leaked its natrium and its natron or whatever you want to call it it's the the salts that do the things in your kidneys that that work their magic and 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 so forth to to work out the 
chemistry in your body to excrete things. When you die, that collects as what's called natron, natrium. That's what the ancients called it. And they used to mine that in these salty areas and they would use that to preserve the bodies. And that's what it's doing here. It preserves the flesh. And it turns it into salty things that we mine and we eat. All right, it's recycling. So don't forget now, tissue comes in layers. You have a layer like this, and then you have another layer that sits on top of it. It's a much heavier connective tissue. This appears to be in a much fleshier red tissue, similar to the rock that I showed you a minute ago of mine that has the, the uh, fascia tongue on it. This will be much tougher than this. This is a red, crumblier, and I imagine this actually is remnants of this wall. And, they, they, you know, I, I don't think they brought this in additionally. Yeah, they might have. But this will be like a crumbly, um, almost like a sedimentary sand when you're done with this. But up here, it's a different issue. That's why they're not mining this, I think, because this is tough. Now, they have a, a machine that obviously makes these curly little grooves here, and I think that is a curly little groove they did with a, 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 a machine. That's not something that is like a blood vessel. I don't believe, because I've seen the other ones, they sculpt it in here, they're little circular patterns like that, and I don't believe those are natural. I've looked into this system, and, um, and it's, it's extraordinary. All right, so I showed you this, and you see what I'm claiming is this is elastins. This is the fleshier part of the tissue, which can do the contractual part, and this is the more structural part, which would be layered in there as connective tissues, very similar to what I showed you in that red rock. All right, now this is tendinous tissue in the body, and you can see it's very similar the wavy patterns and so forth. There's different stress levels and it, you know, it depends on how the thing died. But that's, there's different layers and then there is these different little wavy patterns and the different bloody areas and then the connective tissue areas. And there is this style of connective tissue too, which I don't think it's actually connective tissue, more of a, like a cellulite fatty tissue, I believe. And that you, we can see all over the earth in these structures here. So, I mean, the things are here, and it depends on how they died and how close they were to the natrium or the natron or whatever you want to call it. It's sodium or potassium. Those two both create the salt conditions that would lead to these salt, you know, products that we mine today. From giant creatures, giant, absolutely enormous. And this is more of the connective tissues and tendons and muscles and different shots of, of um, well, you know, you can see what you see there. That's just anatomical structure. All right, this is by Getty Images, and this is the waviness and the pattern of those, those um, tendons. And that's the fibrils that are in them, those little black fibrils elastins so it's biological and it's time to start taking this serious because not only does this affect geology which is totally wrong now absolutely totally totally incorrect it affects everything because this was our history this stuff was written about these giants and things I didn't make this stuff up I'm just trying to figure it out so that's what I need is that people open their eyes and start paying attention to this. I'm by myself doing this stuff. All right, so come up to Mud Fossil University, ring the bell, do all the things you have to do to get your updates, subscribe, of course, obviously. I don't have to tell you that. All right, so another day at Mud Fossil University. I love you all. God bless you. And I hope you find something that interests you.